one of the most exciting upcoming uh, fighters in the UFC. Is he a prospect? Is he a contender? Probably a combination of both. But uh, we're talking about Mr. Montel Quick Jackson. Welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having me. My pleasure. Man, I'm really excited about your career, man. You're 2-1 and one in the UFC, and I remember your last fight, man. You you were really good on the mic after the after the fight. I forget some of the stuff you said, but man, it looks like you have a lot of a lot of personality and you seem to be comfortable in front of a crowd and an audience. Has that always been mm -hmm. the case or is that is that new now or 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 is that not even true? Oh, man. It all depends on, on on my mood and uh the situation, the atmosphere. Right. Um, if I got something to say, I will say it. If I don't got anything to say, I won't say nothing at all. I like silence. Absolutely, I like that. That's kind of the golden rule, right? You know, if you have something to say, then do it. And if you don't, then keep your mouth closed. I like that. You have a great fight coming up here. Can you let our audience know uh where that's going to be, uh and when and who you're fighting? I'm fighting uh January 25th. In Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, and I'm fighting a Brazilian. Absolutely. So that, <laughs> that's okay. We don't have to give him uh, any love. But uh, what do you know about uh, this opponent? He's kind of is he kind of a, an experienced fighter compared to yourself, or are you about equal in experience? I'm not sure, man. I don't know anything. I just know I got a, I got I got the contract and I signed it and got a date. Right back to the gym. Absolutely, and you but, know, and you know, you just got to hit that 135 pound mark, right? That's it. That's all I got to do. Now, originally, no nothing else. Absolutely. Now, originally, you were 145, I think, right? Was that for your first couple of fights, or how long were you uh, a featherweight, and uh, how long have you been a bantamweight? Uh, the majority. Well, it, it's crazy, man. Like I don't fought from 35. But then they're like 65, 70. Oh, wow. Like, it, it just don't matter. Like, you got to take the fights that's available. But the majority of my career is, like, as an amateur was at 45. I had two fights maybe at 55. And then, like, some kickboxing way tough fights just at, like, 55 and 45. So, like, I, I, I bounced around, man. Cool. And so 35 looks like is where you found your home now. It's, it's I'm sure it's a cut like anything else is a cut. But it seems like you make it. You're a pretty young guy, and so it seems like that's that's where we can find you. Or are you going to be kind of like uh, like King Mo used to say, uh, uh, a money weight? Wherever the fights are, you'll fight. Or do you think you your team really wants you to be at bantamweight? It's whatever, man. <laughs> I like it. It is whatever. Like um, I I really don't have no problem making a uh, 35. Uh, it just it just no, nothing else but just you know just being disciplined, man. Not not like eating crazy man like i don't eat crazy as it is but just like not not eating crazy and then just wa watching my carbs and stuff and make sure making sure i'm i'm, I'm getting my work in and i'll be fine man like even like like like, like right now like i walk around at 48 47 so like no big deal like at all. Waste, no it's no it's no problem very cool no problem so where do you train uh, i train out of pira vita okay and I, I do I do jujitsu and I do my grappling some of my grappling out of three sixty Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. There's some good people over there. Any 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 UFC fighters you could throw out or people that are uh MMA fighters? Yeah, I I, I train with Ode Osborne, I train with Leah Ledton, I train with Zach Otto, I train with Alton Cunningham, I train with Tim Hiley. Tyus, Javier, Cronado. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I train with some killers, man. It sounds like it, man. It sounds like Murderer's Row over there. Yeah, we got a lot of we got a lot of sleepers, man. Very cool. So tell us a little bit about your backstory, man. How did you how did you get from from wherever you were before you were in combat sports, whether it was junior high school or high school? What was the first combat sport that you jumped into, and and you know what was going on in your life then that that made you want to jump into some sort of combat sport. Tell us about that, and then tell us how you got from there to being a UFC fighter, maybe some of the highlights for a few minutes. Oh, man, easy. Uh, I, I started off wrestling. Like, my first, my first like, official combat sport, like, going, going through, like, seasons and everything was wrestling. I boxed around a little bit as a kid, but nothing too serious. 
besides, you know, just in and out, in and out, just just doing something as a hobby, and and then like um like I I, I like I end up getting in like trouble and stuff, and then our our security guard, Mr. Jones, had, had like made a deal with me. He was like, all right, Montel, do this for you. If you complete a whole season of wrestling, no quit, no nothing. We forget about the referral. Oh wow. So I was like, cool, all right, boom. Shook hands. And there I was. I started my I started wrestling my junior year. My senior year, I ended up making it to the state. Um I wrestled for like the Wisconsin national team, Gregor Roman. Had a chance to, you know, wrestle a, a invitational. And that's why I met this uh met the coach, Coach Rob. I forgot his last name. He was a head coach up at uh, Marquette, Michigan. He told me to give him a holler. And I come up and enroll in school and everything. And the summer I was supposed to go up, uh, wrestling got dropped from the Olympics. Oh, man. So, so I was, like, up in limbo. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know, my friend Devon, my friend Devon had, um, you know, he had, he had, he had a, right, a fight coming up against Rafael Stotts at the time. So he told me, like, hey, Montel, like, would you come over here and, you know, like, just come wrestle around with me and stuff, you know? Help him prepare for the fight. Yeah. So like, and that was at Red Shapers, you know. That's yep. where I had got my got my start at, you know, yep. at Red Shaper MMA. So I, I go over there, I start rolling around with him. He get done wrestling and everything, and he was like, "Hey, Montel, why don't you stay in a uh, jiu-jitsu? They got open mat. Like it's just sort of like wrestling. Like ain't no real big difference. Like I I, I think you'll like it. Mm-hmm. So I stay. I start doing jiu-jitsu a little bit. I start rolling with some guys, and I met this little Puerto Rican guy named Gato. He had, he had, like, introduced me to, like, grappling and everything, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He had, like, started, like, teaching me little stuff, like, showing me, like, little tricks and stuff and, like, really giving me, like, like the the smaller details of, like, uh, Jiu-Jitsu and stuff. And um, he had just key, just talked me into just keep coming back. Like, even after Devon had his fight, he'd be like, once I'll come back on Sunday. Come back on Sunday, you know. We can roll, I'll shoot some more stuff, and this is and this. And I just kept coming, and then... um. Then like, I'm not sure like what was the time frame, but like right around that time, it was a, it was a jujitsu tournament coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tell me like like Montel, like I want you to do this this jujitsu tournament, you know? Like I'm a, I'm doing a tournament too, but I'll be there to coach you, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm I just like man, got the I don't know, man. You weren't sure about that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I told him, I told him straight up, man, got the I, I I don't know, man, I don't know nothing about this stuff. I, I only know what you told me to do, you know? I right. Didn't do what you told me. To do. Yeah. I really, I really don't know nothing. Yep. Absolutely, that's normal. I'm a jujitsu guy myself, and that happens in the beginning. It's in your head, then it's out of your head, right? Yeah. So like, Gata just kept telling me like, "Oh, Mattel, come, come, come," and I, and, and he was like, "Like, Poppy, all you got to do, what you got to do is believe in yourself, Poppy. This is this. Like, they can't do nothing. You, they, they, they can't stop you. You, you can take them down. You can smash these. You can pass their guard. You can do this. You can do that." Yep. I'm like, Gata, I don't know, man. Like these these dudes been doing this stuff a lot longer than me. Like, I haven't been to no real class, no nothing. I'm just doing what you tell me to do, you know? Yep. He's like, you got it, you got it, you got it. So, like, I knew, like, if I didn't come to this tournament, like, I know Gato was going to call me a pussy for the rest of my life. So, right. I just, I was, I'm going to just forget it, man. And just listen to Gato. Just go to this tournament. So, I went to the tournament, you know. I ended up winning, you know. I ended up smashing all the guys. And it was this one guy at the end. He was like, he had told me, he was like, he was like, he's like, oh, this motherfucker's a sandbagger. Oh, no. This is a new. He was a wrestler. He did this. He did that. Like this dude shouldn't be in our bracket. He's a cheater. And I'm oh, like, Gato. Man. Like I'm, I'm talking to Gato, but I'm looking at this dude. You know, yeah. I'm staring at him. I'm yep. real mad. He's talking shit. Yep. So I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, Gato. What the fuck is a sandbagger? This motherfucker called me a sandbagger. This isn't it. Like Gato, you told me to sign up for this shit. Like this yeah. isn't this. So Gato, like, oh, Poppy, you don't gotta worry about him. Yeah. He's just a sore loser. <laughs> exactly. You a little bit. Yep. Like, like he, he mad because he got fucking four stripes on his white belt and you just came in and whooped his ass and you had no real experience. Yeah. Other than what the fuck you told you to do, fuck this guy. Yeah. So, like, I, That's <laughs> like great. I wanted to whoop his ass. The guy was like, no, he just a little pussy, man. Way better than him. So, like, you know, I got my belt on. I went home. And then after that, Gato just talked me into, like, signing up at Reds. I like it. And, like, MMA. And then yeah. I met, like, Solo and Scotty. And I met Red Schaefer, you know, and I joined a gym. And I just started fighting, man. Absolutely. Red Schaefer, a great fighter in his own right, and uh, absolutely the Midwest. I'm originally from Michigan myself, so the Midwest really has people that can fight, and great people and great teamwork that'll help work with you. 
and it sounds like you have that. Yeah, in the in the in the jujitsu, you probably know now with your experience looking back on it, some of the some of the jujitsu guys, especially in the beginning level, don't train with any wrestlers. I've trained jujitsu with wrestlers for for most of the time I've trained, and I've trained for about nine nine to ten years, actually about twelve years on and off, but a little bit off uh, during that time. But yeah, man, when uh when you have a wrestler who has that base, and and even without the jujitsu skill, if you don't know that feeling of a wrestler and the and the weight and the balance, it can seem like something's wrong there. But but it isn't. You didn't have any more jujitsu training than him. You just had that wrestling base, and that's not cheating at all. That guy was, like you said, kind of a sore loser, and he got to learn that if you're going to start training some jujitsu and you want to compete. You better start training with some wrestlers because the wrestlers that have jujitsu are a hell of a force, and you got to know how to deal with them. So I think right there, the guys around you knew that that was the case. Did you did you take to to jujitsu pretty smoothly and easily? And after that, is that something that you started to to implement? Because I know there's a similarity and a difference to it. You have some great people like uh, Jake Shields, who was a, a really good jujitsu guy and a good wrestler. You had Damian Maya. The same thing. I think even Ben Askren, even though he didn't get a chance to show it, had some good subs. Actually, he he did that bulldog choke, which is kind of like a catch wrestling choke. But you know, do, how do you feel? Did you make the transition to jujitsu pretty seamlessly, and do you feel really comfortable with it, or is that something that still can take a while coming from being a wrestler making that transition? Man, it it, it really it really comes down to IQ, man. IQ and stepping out of your comfort zone. Like most guys will. They, they they know that they're good wrestlers, or they know that they're a good grappler, but when when it's time to practice, they don't fully commit to they don't fully commit or embrace whatever they're doing. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like a guy would be like, oh well, the wrestling, I, you know, I I do this or I do that, you know, and I just look at him like it's not fucking wrestling. Right. Or a jiu jitsu guy be like, oh, I I take it back and do this. And I just look at him. This. This is not jujitsu. This is a wrestling class. Like right. Yep. So I I think it it really just comes it comes down to letting let like leave the ego aside for one second, get out of your comfort zone, and do exactly what it is that is being taught or do exactly what it is that you lack. You need to do it. But in, in my case, um, it, it it really just came down to you know just like Gato always just tell me is like you know like 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 wrestling, r- wrestling and um wrestling and jujitsu is it's one or the other, you know. It's like black and white, but but in in between that, it's the gray. Yeah. You gotta find gray. You gotta find that 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 good balance in which you can in which you can use your wrestling to help your jujitsu, or use your jujitsu to help your wrestling. Exactly. So you gotta find that gray. Like when you find that gray, then, then everything comes together, and your transitions are seamless, and you, you and you really become unstoppable because at at that point they know you can stand up. Yeah, with you can take fight down. Like you're not afraid to go to your feet. Like you can stop takedowns. Yep. You don't got to worry about pulling guard. You can pull pull guard and have no problem because you know you can stand up. You 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 can sweep, you can sweep some or stand up at any time. Like you're not afraid. You know you you can go all around. You know so like I I think I I think like that's what I strive for every time I'm grappling. Every time I wrestle, that that's what I strive for, man. Uh, transitions, man. Blend it all together, man. Absolutely. Shake it up and see what, see what we can get. Absolutely. And you know who I think was one of the best examples of that? He's no longer in the UFC, but uh, Demetrius Johnson, Mighty Mouse. And uh, yeah, yeah, my, yeah my, my, Mighty Mouse was like, like if you if you talk about somebody that's like skillful, like like agile, like a complete fighter. Yep. And I and I and like this this this, this is like no knock to GSP, you know, because right. GSP. Way before Demetrius Johnson, he was putting it together well. Yes. Like you talk about a guy that never wrestled. Right. Absolutely. And, and double again wrestlers like it was amazing. We, we not we not talk about like no like a guy that just found we talking about guys that been training yep. wrestling since they was five and six years old. Guys that were NCAA champs, guys were all Americans. Yep. He's taking them down with nothing. It was crazy. You talk about a with a sick freaking jab. And he never boxed a like he never like fully boxed, like no. You know? Nope. It's true. So like I I, I think like no, I think I think when you talk about that, you just and then just put Demetrius Johnson above that, yeah. and that's what makes it crazy because that that guy can do everything. 
Absolutely. He can fight left, right. He can um, he can fight left side, right side. He can yep. grapple. Yep. He can wrestle. He can kickbox. He can Muay Thai. Like incredible. Whatever it is, he can do, and he can put it together in a split second, man. Exactly. I mean, the transitions were just so amazing. He was such a smart fighter and such a you know such a talented fighter and. Man, I was there for that fight, that second fight with Cejudo. He split fights with Cejudo. In that second fight, the decision could have gone either way. But you had Cejudo fight pretty much the best fight of his life and, and maybe just edge Demetrius Johnson or, in some people's opinion, losing. It's, so, it's too bad that that rubber match never happened between those two. But, you know, definitely uh, amazing fighters. And so you're here and you have that same attitude, and I like that because that's really what it's about. You want to be a student of the game, just like Mike Tyson was a student of boxing, having you really watched all the great champions and learned from the past. It sounds like you're kind of uh, that way as well, kind of a student of the game. Do you watch the game still a lot now uh, that you're in it, or, or, or was that just mostly when you were kind of learning what you're doing and you don't follow it too much now? I've heard answers, different answers from fighters, but uh, what's your case? Are you Are you aware of what's going on in the other divisions and... Are you looking at people and enjoying some MMA fights on a Saturday night, or is it only if you're in it? Uh, I, I watch. I, I go out. Like like when I watch guys that fight, even even some of the no game, like even some of the guys that they, they don't have any name to them. But I, I go back and I I make mental notes and I, I'll go back and I watch that guy and and I find out and I study and I and I look to see what is this guy doing. What does this guy do, and what does and what does he do well? Nice. Because we all got to do what we do best, especially in fights. So you're gonna see, you're gonna you're gonna get glimpses of what somebody do best. And once I figure out what they do best, then I, I go back and I watch, and I watch, and I watch, and I watch. I, I, I watch the progression from, from from old fights if I can find them, to previous fights, to, to the fights they just had now. Like I, I go back and I watch, and I, and I see how they evolve and doing whatever they do that they do best. You know. I like that. So, how about uh, how about support? Is your family behind you in fighting? I know a lot of people's mom don't want them fighting, and some people's dad don't want them fighting. But how how is that working out? Do you have some family support, or does this kind of make you the the, the black sheep, as they used to say, where you're doing something crazy that your family's not so sure about? I'm uh, uh, I, I don't know, man. It's yeah, hell yeah. Most of my family watch. That's they cool. watch, but like, they watch and they they always ask me like, "Oh, I'm gonna tell you, you got a fight coming. When's your next fight? When's this? When's that?" And you know, That's I cool. just look. And I'm like, I don't know anything. Right. I don't know nothing. Right. Like I I will know when you know. Like <laughs> I like. That. I don't know anything. And so you're from Wisconsin originally. Is that the case? Smack dab. North side was hiding. Sounds good, man. So Ben Askren uh, was from there. Uh, uh, now, no, he wasn't. He was Missouri. But he trained over there at Duke Rufus's, and I know they have a great school over there. That's got to be probably just kind of competing with you because I, I think Red Schaefer is not that far away from Duke Rufus's, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my, my, most of the schools are pretty much close, man. And every everybody on uh, the MMA scene in Wisconsin, or even like the grappling scene in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. it's a small, like, it's a, it ain't small, but it's a, to us it's a small community. So everybody knows somebody. That's cool. Like you, you gonna see somebody like uh like like Red like Red Schaefer have he been having one of like the biggest like open gym like open mats mm -hmm. in the state. Like every Sunday, every Sunday, every holiday, Red to have open mat. Cool. So you might have some no people matter. from different gyms even jumping in there, huh? Yeah, hell, hell yeah. Like if like if you if, if you really want to see. If you really want to test or see how good you is or how good your your jujitsu is, the only thing you gotta do is go to any open mat. I like it. Now you're also getting really good at throwing your hands because I think you mentioned you did a couple of uh, some sort of striking matches early on. How do you feel? Do you feel equally as comfortable in all three skill sets, the striking, the wrestling, and jujitsu? Because it seems to me like you're really comfortable. With all of them, or is that a secret you don't want to give away? Oh man, it, it's all in the tape, man. Literally all in the tape. No, like you know, you know, it's, it sounds cliche, but you know, women lie, men lie, numbers don't lie. Like, just just go back and see, like you know, like e even like 
I go back and watch myself and I, you know, I critique myself and I self self analyze and you know, I'm I am my biggest critic, so I I can say yeah. I like I'm that. I'm getting better every, every day. Very cool. Every Let me get your opinion on a few fights, if you wouldn't mind, since definitely I know you watch them closely. So what what do you think that um that uh, Jose Aldo is coming down now to bantamweight to go up against Marlon Marias? All these years people have heard that he was talking about going up to uh to lightweight because 145 was too hard for him as he got older. It almost makes you think, how is he going to even make that weight? I don't know. Do you, do you think that that providing he makes that weight, that's going to be a competitive match with Marlon Marias, or you think uh? Uh, one of them uh, is going to be a lot more uh, uh, effective. Like, uh, okay, so like that, like I, I tell you this, it, it might be competitive the first round. After the first round, I think all those going to fade. Yeah. Partly like because, he, because of the weight cut or age he, or both or what? His, his fight is going to happen way before he walk in the, in the ring. Yeah. His fight you on the scale, so like that's that's damn near the most important battle. It's yeah. easy to go out there and fight. Yeah. The it, hard part is making weight and making it comfortably without taking a lot out of you. Like, I, I don't I don't think it's gonna be a competitive fight after the first round. Yeah. Yeah, I think you could be right because Marias is pretty amazing. I mean, Marias was beating Cejudo until he wasn't until Cejudo came back. But who's next in line for Cejudo at bantamweight? It looks like we're looking at Aljamain Sterling. You think he would present a, a interesting challenge to Cejudo? Anybody in the top ten could be champion, man. Yeah, I like Anybody that. Anybody top ten, any day, any given day, they can be champion. So like, like, like rankings, it really don't matter. Rankings is nothing but like a pecking order to see who gets the next crack. Yep. So like, like you got, you got to think. Any given day, anybody in top fifteen, anybody can be champion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, on that day, so like, right, it, it, it just all depends on you know, absolutely, who got that dog. Absolutely, I agree with you. Sorry to interrupt you, uh, Montel, but I agree with you 100%. How about one weight division up? We have a very significant fight, probably the most significant fight in the featherweight division coming up uh, next month with uh, Max a Blessed Holloway going up against Alexander Volkanovsky from Australian. We're talking like about a five inch height difference. In that fight, what do you think? Can you can you give me any insight uh, that the fans can look for in that fight that that maybe they might not be thinking about? And how do you think that fight plays out, Volkanovski and Holloway? Max gonna season his ass up, a lot of pepper. Yeah, a lot of pepper. He gonna season his ass up, a lot, lot, a lot of pepper. Yeah, yeah. Until he, then he gonna put his ass in the oven. You yeah, know, yeah. he's gonna cook him until he's done. You yeah. know, and <laughs> yeah. he, they gonna. Get his ass up out of there, like like people people don't realize that freaking um that fucking cardio is a weapon. Yeah. And and I don't I, people are like, oh Max don't got knockout power Max can't do this. Listen man, you can only take so many before you get full. You can only eat so much before your ass get full and you done. Yeah. So like like I I think Max don't put that cardio on, put that pace on him man, and you know just 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 smother him with them punches man until he's ready to go. A lot of pepper, pepper yeah. the shit out of his ass. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Do you think it'll go the distance, or it'll be, uh, it'll end inside the distance? I, I think it. I think Max, if Max don't get him by the third, the fourth for sure, they ain't gonna go the whole five. Yeah, I think you're right. But uh, I tell you what, Volkanovski is a tough guy. He's been on a tear. But yeah, this might be a big, uh, a big uh, mountain for him to climb in the form of Max Holloway. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. That don't make a difference, man. Everybody tough. It, it all comes down to who's smart. Yep. The, the smarter guy and the guy you gotta be smart and you gotta be executing. Yeah. You With gotta them, advantage of With them. small windows and, and, and like glimpses, you gotta take advantage of that shit. So yeah. very true. What about two weight classes up? This one I'd really like your opinion on. They it looks like have got Khabib signed on the uh on the dotted line and we're just waiting for Tony Ferguson. The sign on the line again. They tried to make that fight four other times over the last few years, and every single time the fight has been canceled. So we're hoping, everyone's hoping that that fight won't be canceled. And if that happens, I think that may be one of the most interesting fights we've seen for a while. I think Tony Ferguson may give Khabib his, his toughest fight yet. Do you agree with that, or how do you see that fight unfolding? I think, I, I, I think, um, 
I think if if if, if Khabib doesn't get you know hypnotized by, by the awkwardness, because there, there there's no way you can train or try to prepare for a guy like Tony Ferguson other than being in front of him, like. Tony Ferguson is durable, he's long, and he's awkward. So like that that like fucks you up. Especially if you like most guys that you're gonna see, they're gonna fight, they fight technical. Yeah. Everything's uniform. Like you can see it coming, like you can have guests, like, okay, this is coming, that's coming. When you fight somebody like Tony Ferguson, you don't know what's coming. But but then too, you know, Khabib's a dog. Like, you know. If, if anything, I think he's going to resort back to what he knows best. He's going to take him down and try to grind a pound of shit out of him, you know? And and then, too, you know, he got that cardio. He got that cardio. Even, even if he gets in trouble, that, that first and that second and that third, he got he got the fourth and the fifth to, you know, put him away, you know, drown him, just drown him. Take him to take his ass to the deep end and just drown him, man, you know? Literally drown him. So... Yeah, that's going to be super exciting. I really think it is. And, and and like what you're saying, this may be the most competitive fight that Khabib's had. You know, Khabib had one fight, I think, in his first or second fight in the UFC. Uh, and this was before USADA was checking for for you know for uh, substances in your system. And he went up against a guy named uh, named uh, Gleison Tebow from Brazil. <laughs> you remember that man? He was about 195 fighting at one. He came down to 155. And uh, Khabib he couldn't take him down. He couldn't take him down. Remember, right? He was too heavy. He kept. He kept. He was like taking. He was laying on the fence. Yep. Every time he was down on the fence, you know, like that, like, like that. That same thing happened to Ronda Rousey when she fought. Um, she fought Holly Holm. Yep. Holly Holm got yep. him back against the cage. And yep. That's right. You can't think nobody back against the cage, especially if they, you know, they got a good position. They stronger than you. Exactly. Against your game, too, like can take him down. Like exactly. That, that fight that throws a big wrench in your game. Oh yeah, and that fight could have gone either way. That decision could have gone to Glayson Tebow, but you know maybe it's it's good that it didn't because then with Usada coming in, you know Tebow never looked quite the same as that. Not to put a slam on him, he was a great fighter. But uh, yeah, man, that was the most competitive anyone's been with uh, with Khabib, and I know Khabib has improved since then. And uh, you know people can't be that big anymore in the lightweight class. But yeah, Tony Ferguson. He, he spent some time in Michigan. He's actually from Michigan. He doesn't talk about it too much, but he's from Michigan, my home state. And he, he wrestled in college there. And, man, like you said, El Kakui, that guy is so unorthodox. He's got those sharp elbows. You know, he's got that good wrestling. He's got that crazy unorthodox style. And I, I just I just think that he's doing some crazy training for Khabib. He's going to be looking to, to bust him up. He's going to be looking to slice him up. I, I have a feeling that on the transitions, He's going to be looking for some leg locks and all kinds of stuff on the transition to try to surprise Khabib and to back him off. So I think I really think that fight is going to be one of the most dynamic, interesting fights in a while. I know Tony hasn't fought in a little bit, and he hasn't fought as many fights as Khabib and hasn't got as much attention. So there's a lot of people that don't know him that well that say, oh, this is just going to be a walkover for Khabib. But I couldn't, I couldn't disagree more. I think it's going to be a very tough fight. And it's going to be one of the more exciting fights out there uh, at 55. There are so many great fights going on, man. The UFC is really continuing to blow up, man. And we've got exciting fighters like yourself in there. And uh, that just makes it that much better. But, uh, man, I want, to, I want to thank you for your opinion on all the stuff. You know what? Before I let you go, any thought on the third fight, the women's fight, uh, Amanda Nunez against the woman from Holland, Jermaine Durandamy. Give me like a quick minute on that, if you could, or 30 seconds. I got the lioness, man. Yeah. He's tough. Like, like she, she got that like, she got like that old school like, shooto box style like mentality. Like, she gonna fight you. Like, it ain't gonna be no breaks. It ain't gonna be no hold on. Ain't gonna be no circling back and all. Like, she in your face. Like, she gonna fight you. That's true. But, but you know, like we we just gonna we gotta see how we we, we gotta see who's gonna be the who's gonna be the better striker. Exactly. Cause like, who, her, go ahead. Gonna, gonna, gonna cancel out. Whether um, Amanda Nunez is, is, is her boxing going to cancel out Jermaine's kickboxing? Exactly. You know, like GDR is like, you know, she is like a Dutch. She, she from Highland area. So like, she's like, they got dope kickboxers. They always got dope strikers. So, like, we, we got to see who's going to go for that first takedown. Exactly. Or if that's like, you know, Amanda Nunez is like game plan is to come in, you know, 
get her going with, you know, some hands, you know, flash a couple of jabs, crosses, hooks, and then when she overcommits on a kick or should have come back with a good value, like a good, like, volume or a volley of punches, and then she just gets under that and takes her down and, you know, put the pressure on her. But we, we just got to see. But I, I, I think it's going to be more striking than anything. If a man chooses not to take her down, she won't show off her, her striking. Yeah, I agree. And I think uh, going off your striking against an eight-time Muay Thai world champion uh, might not be the smartest thing. But then again, she's got the power to do it. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, would it Tell me how crazy it would be if three titles change hands on that night. And it could happen, couldn't it? Oh, of course, man. Like, like, like I tell people all the time, like, man, any given day. Yep. Exactly. Any given day, you, you you learn that in wrestling, man. Any given day. Yep. Anybody anybody in here can be a champion. Anybody here can medal. Any given day. Yep. Like like when people be like, oh man, that guy, you know, that, that guy took he took eight. He's an AC all American. All American. I'm like, yeah, like he like you know how I many people that wrestle like in the states. Like yep. he's eight out of all those people, and I'm and I'm talking about like killers. Like they they were just better on that day. Like. Yep. Another day, like tomorrow or the day before, he probably could have kicked their ass. Like, yep. Or like they see them at like a open, uh, like like an open like wrestling, like wrestling, or you know they going live. But this guy probably kick these dudes' ass. Like, you don't know that. And then you gotta think like everyone's up there. They all busted up. Everybody's got injuries. Everybody's tired. Everybody's hungry. Yep. Like, like you just you just never know, man. Any, any given day, man, anybody can be a champion. Absolutely. At that high level, the the skill uh, level is so close and so even. You just never know. I agree. Very well put. Well, Montel Jackson, I want to thank you so much for jumping on with us. Let people know how they can support you on social media. You you guys can find me on Instagram at Yo Soy Rapido. You can find me on my fan page on Facebook at Montel Quick Jackson. And if you guys are on Twitter, you can follow me on Twitter at Montello135. Excellent. And then again, tell us the date again for the next fight and the location. I am fighting on UFC Fight Night, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. I am fighting January 25th. Fantastic. We'll be cheering for you, Montel. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come and join us here on the MMA Power Hour. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Have a great night. Thank you.